Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. This is episode six of Private Lesson. In today's episode, I'm working with James. This is James' second time back doing a private lesson. Um, cover a little bit of body position standing, transition from standing to sitting, and then work on the sitting position a little bit with James. He had kind of an issue with that inside foot just basically dragging the ground. So I got him just keeping both feet on the pegs, trying to eliminate that bad habit and just almost one less thing to worry about keeping the feet on the pegs. We talk about um, line choice in some corners that ultimately will lead you to the jump a little bit better, a little bit straighter. Then we talk about some seat bouncing stuff. We're a little bit all over the place in this lesson. I try to structure the video so it makes as much sense as possible, but like always, hopefully you guys can take as much away from this as you possibly can. Again, keep the comments coming. Love the questions that you guys have. I do my best to always answer pretty much everyone I can. Of course, it's time consuming for me and I have a, a lot of other things I have to worry about. Please subscribe. We're already, um, it's going up fast, actually really fast. I'm, I'm gonna be doing another giveaway here shortly. And I have some new apparel coming for you guys very soon, which is super cool, super exciting. And I really just appreciate you guys watching these videos. So like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and enjoy the video. So today we're working with James. James is a vet sea rider. Um, we're here at Tomahawk MX. It is 11 a.m. It's about 38 degrees, got down to 27 last night. So the track is frozen and it's in the process of thawing out. Tad took the harrow to it. Um, so it's gonna get really good. But for right now, the clumps are really staying solid as clumps. Usually they would break apart. And with James being a vet sea rider, all we're doing is focusing on the basic body position and being neutral and balanced on the bike. So in the turns, I'm having James keep both feet on the pegs because if you're gonna put your foot out in a turn, I want it to be high and tight with your inside toe pretty much touching your front fender. It should be so high and tight. If it's not there, it's on the foot peg. And I'd say 99% of people are just using their inside leg as a tripod and just dabbing it on the ground. So I'm trying to break that habit for them and get them to gain confidence, keeping momentum through turn, getting lean angles through turns without relying on that inside foot so much. You need to maintain this position until you sit. Cause I didn't sit at all. I stood the whole time. Yeah, you, you sat a couple oh, there, times. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you stood okay. a couple. That's the thing too, is you want to be consistent with that. Yeah. If you're going to stand, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But do it every time. All right. Don't sit one time, don't sit. go leg out one time, then put on one time. You want to do something that you can do every lap. Yeah. So, all right, least, so I won't sit. You know, I'm to turn. Me, like, I might have been explaining this to you last time. I, I have my markers, so like I know yeah. when I'm getting to that sprinkler head. I'm standing up, knees are back, knees are back, knees are back. Boom, I'm at my sitting point. All right, now I'm sitting to the front. It's not a slow transition. Yeah. Today, you don't have to worry about the bumps that'll take you out but you have to worry about the track being slick. So if you're making that slow transition to the front, you're gonna put a lot of weight on that front end and that bike's gonna want a knife on you. Or if you do hit one of those big solid clumps and you have weight too far forward, that could get dangerous as well. So you need to be in that position until you're not. Um, I noticed that and the one time or two times that I did see you standing through the turn, your knees were breaking contact with the shroud a little bit. Not in the straightaway, but as you went around the turn. Because I could see you were trying to put the bike down under you while you were standing, which is what you're supposed to do. But you want to do that with your knees connected. See how I can lean the bike yeah. under me while standing with my knees here? I'm not breaking contact and then just wiggling the bike in between my knees. The knees, and somebody commented on my, one of my YouTube videos last night saying, well, there's a time and place to grip with your knees. That's not true, unless you're doing like arena cross uh, arena cross, enduro cross, and you're like planting your foot on a log and doing some type of crazy maneuver, your knee always should be connected to the bike. Where you're letting the bike do its wiggle and move under you is with your hips, and you're getting better at that too. The further back your knees are, the more unlocked your hips can get, and you allow your hips to wiggle and your knees are just gonna kinda go with it to let the bike do its thing under you. That's all it is. So normally when I'm doing laps i'm going over the roller and i'm yeah. all the way inside today obviously way yeah. too slick to do that this is a jump i'm gonna want you to get over by the end of the day i think this is a good one to be able to do right now no just because of how slippery it is go around the roller take your time get straight that's the biggest thing 
we should be going straight. Keep in mind, there's a lot of landing room on this jump. So if this is the takeoff here, you can have the bike going straight and still be aimed a little bit that way. So it's that. Let's see if he's able to get it. <laughs> so this is just why you gotta be a little careful. I mean, that's, you can feel how frozen that is. So as long as the bike is not trying to carve up the takeoff and it's straight, if you do get wheel spin, it's not the end of the world. You're just gonna end up casing it. You know what I mean? And as long as you're balanced neutral, not too far back, not too far back, uh, not too far forward, not too far back, it's not gonna do anything funky. Yeah, 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 either. it'll fly straight. It'll shoot you straight. You won't get that kick sideways. Chances are, if this stays as slippery as it is, and a lot of people show up, somebody's gonna end up crashing on this jump because they're gonna try to carve up it sideways. They're gonna get that wheel spin. They're either gonna catch traction and get kicked the opposite direction, or they're just gonna basically do like a 180 this way and land backwards that way. Um, what I would do to combat that and try to get traction is to sit for the turn and stay on the seat the whole way. Okay. Because if you're getting off the seat here and unloading that suspension a little bit, you're just gonna really light that thing up. Stay on the seat and put that weight into the tires. Just try to, and try to be as easy and slow with the throttle as you can. Let's see, this guy was jumping it. Let's see what, how he approaches it. He's doing the same thing. Scary. So he's standing, his feet are out. He's got a lot of things going wrong. And he was carving the takeoff. So you saw he got a little kick. Yeah, this jump's gonna be a little hairy today. Let's see how it goes. See, Talon was carving it a little bit too much up the face. Take the time to get straight, even though that means coming a little wider, slowing down in the turn, get that bike straight. It's gonna just, it's gonna save you if something does go wrong and you do get that wheel spin. Elbows! Oh. He got that kick because he was still carving the takeoff. Guys, if you're uncomfortable in a situation or a little tentative about a jump, get the bike straight. See, he's closing himself off with line choice. He's coming too far inside, which is causing him to carve the whole way, rather than giving up the time, getting squared up and getting straight. Now, 26 on the KTM is carving it, but he's also a way more advanced rider, so he can handle it. Although I will say, with it being frozen like this, it's kind of gambling a little bit by doing that. Situations that you do end up getting kicked sideways, which is on a jump like this, especially in conditions like today, it's gonna happen. Let the bike do its thing, stay loose to the hips, tight with the knees, land on the throttle. That's the biggest thing. Whether you case, overshoot, land a jump perfect, always be in the habit of landing on the throttle. Early. Just be consistent with it. Okay. That's it. I'm always doing it, yeah. Even it, it is a gradual increase in RPMs, but it's never a crack of the right. throttle. A crack of the throttle combined with carving up the takeoff face is never going to be good. Okay. You're either going to just wash out completely, like I said, or you're going to catch traction and get kicked the opposite way, which is what happened to you. You caught traction and it sent your back tire to the right. Okay. What we're doing here is we're just trying to create better angle. Everybody's in such a rush to get to the turn that they create a sharp angle and then are forced to carve up the jump face. Come in out, give a little bit of time, but you're going to make it and it's going to be much safer. All right, I think he's getting that kick. He was very smooth on the throttle that time, but where he's sitting on the seat to seat bounce, he's way up on his gas gas cap. So I don't think there's enough weight on the rear when he does seat bounce it, where he's getting that wheel spin and it's causing him to get that swap sideways. When you go to sit to seat bounce and jump, sit dead center on the seat. You're not gonna sit on the back fender because that's gonna probably cause you to compress and unload into a front flip, but you gotta sit center and get some weight into that rear tire as well, not just the front.
So comparing James' body position to mine in the super slow-mo, he actually, he's starting to get it figured out. He looked really good from the waist up. The only thing that really looks different, my butt's probably an inch or two further back than his, um, but I'm on the balls of my feet, so it keeps my knees a little further back. He was riding really flat-footed, which in turn was putting his knees too far forward on the shroud, which could have also been part of the reason he was getting the wheel spin, because that's shifting some weight, extra weight to the front that you don't want. Cold or no? Today's a recipe for arm pumping. Okay. Just being cold and I wasn't, that, being a little unpredictable. Yeah. I will. That last one was great. Last felt good. Super great. What's happening is the more confidence yeah. you get, the earlier your commitment. Is. Okay. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Before. Like the last one, you really started to roll the throttle on more aggressive, okay. closer to me. Okay. And then it just naturally carried you a little further because you didn't have to do anything crazy. And it was a hard time. landing. Well, not as hard. No, and that was the furthest you had got. Yeah. And the bike shot perfectly straight. Felt good. James is still doing kind of a, like a, a weird half sit, half stand motion. In this corner, he's standing, his attack position standing is pretty good coming down the straight. And then he gets into the turn and he can't quite decide whether to sit or to stand. So he's doing this weird in between thing. So we're just trying to break him of that right now. Remember guys, our stand up, our sit down points, our shifting points, all of this should remain very consistent. It shouldn't vary any more than a foot or two either direction as the track starts to develop throughout the day. You can be consistent this way. If you're doing what James is doing, which is sometimes he stands up the whole turn, sometimes he sits down the whole turn, there's no way you can be consistent and repeat yourself because you're doing something different every time. I should be able to give you a blank piece of paper and you should be able to draw the track map and then draw for me exactly where your stand and sitting points are and where your shift points are. And that should be something you repeat every lap. I'll give him credit that he is standing every time, but it looks like such a hesitant stand that he, you could tell he, he's a little confused and torn whether he wants to stand or sit every single time. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but I ended up drawing a line where I want his butt to hit the seat because he was standing all the way through the turn. Not everybody has access to a personal line drawer, but this is why we have to, you know, have markers. So like that black post, that sprinkler head with the yellow tip. All these things can be used as markers. So he's not doing a lesson right here, but let's see what he says. Yeah, pretty much fine.
You're starting to get in the flow now. How Feels do you feel? good. Yeah. Looks good? Looks great. Looks great. Foot's high. Toe could be to pointed more in, yeah. uh, but it's not pointed out. Okay. So that's a start. Same thing when, you, when you're when you standing, your toes are straight. Uh, it's good. They're not pointed in, but, but, but they're not out. <laughs> so, and they used to be out. Yeah. So we're making that progression. Um, and it's starting to come natural. Is your, really you still pumping up as bad as you were in a half bad. hour ago? Not as bad. Because I had to actually pull you off that time. So that it was kind of a sign. I'm like, all right, at least he's. I was going to go another one. Right. I was like, he did four or five passes and he's still wanting to go. So that's all a good right. sign. Good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And your acceleration up the hill is nice. It's happy to pull you, you off. look good. But... Yeah. You look really good.